page says Clyde and Clerk Clyde Richards. It's the um, it's right, right above waiver petitions. It says um, Chair Russell never stated to the best of his knowledge that was no additional information. So she either there was or that there was no additional. A few more it might take me a minute to find them. Okay. This thing points it out. It's really very helpful. My problem is spell trick. I spell so bad he doesn't even know what I'm trying to spell. Yeah. And then on um, page five of eight, the top of the page, is, this thing jumps so much. Top of the page is uh, motion to waive and report a made by Vice Chair George Kingston. If you go down there to where it says representing the application, uh, it says Mr. Carmine clarified. He was before the board to seek advice and direction on the two options he arrived at for subdivision. Should be for the subdivision. And it should be, uh, instead of Mr. Carmine, it should be Mr. Capital. It's Car Carmine Capital. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But it just says Mr. Carmine. Carmine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Somewhere in here, it said, oh, here it is. Page six of eight, and this is, it shows number 10, case SP219. Yep. It says, uh, third paragraph down, Chair Russell inquired. It should be Chair Russell. What's your last name? Okay. See where it says that? Yes. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Okay. We're very informal around here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That's all I found. I Make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Do I have a second? I'll second that. So we have a motion made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 I'll say nay, so that passes. Yeah. First item of business. Mr. Clerk. Okay. Today's date is what? Fourth? It is. Yeah. Okay. That goes to you. Thank you very much. Uh, case site 2019-11, ground-mounted solar facility request by applicant for the installation of a four megawatt ground mounted solar facility at rear Pease Road, assessor's parcel ID 33-1-0, located on 21.26 plus or minus acres in a residential double A zoning district. The applicant, Steve Breuer, PLH LLC 222 South 9th Street, Suite 1600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is continued from November 19th, December 3rd, December 17th, and January 21st. Mr. Martin, and I would also like to ask attorney Michael Pill to join us. So Mr. Pill has been retained by the town uh, in this matter. Um, so, okay here. yes, please. So um, I think before we hear from attorney Pill, I guess we'd like to um, hear from Mr. Martin. If you have other items, I know we've gotten uh, the last comments from the Department of Public Works. There was nothing of substance mm -hmm. that they wished to add to that. So, is there any? I thought you were going to be in Phoenix. No. I came. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I learned at some 507 or 509 for Mr. Maynard, your town council, that he would not be at this meeting tonight. Uh, and that Mr. Pill would be here to discuss the issue of frontage, uh, and an issue that Mr. Maynard had already opined upon to this board several months ago. And uh, this property owner applicant has uh, diligently and faithfully tried to comply with all the requests in, in its application uh, and the frontage issue has not been raised in several months um, and you already have your council's opinion. I'm informed tonight by you and by Mr. Maynard uh, not beforehand that this issue might arise again and you might seek a separate opinion. Um, I must be frank that it's highly unusual. I think it's unfair to the petitioner, the property owner, to come in here at what has been, what, the sixth or seventh meeting. He, the last time uh, the chairman saying I'm hopeful that this next meeting will be the last meeting in which there will be a vote uh, and if the board is expecting to uh, take a new opinion on something uh, 
and perhaps rely on that to, in its decision. I think that's uh, way outside the bounds of uh, proper handling of this matter, but we'll, we'll see where it goes. Steve made a great effort to be here tonight to wrap up the presentation. I'm not going to address the issues uh, that may arise until if and when they do. <clears throat> but this matter is still is under the jurisdiction of the land court. Mm -hmm. It was reported to the land court uh, by the uh, litigants uh, each step of the way where we were, including the, uh, including the frontage issue. And the court has been monitoring that. And I think it was recently reported that it would be probably voted upon tonight. The court has still retained jurisdiction over this matter. <clears throat> well, I still think that there can be a vote on this decision this evening. I, so, I, I, yeah. That's why I said it, it yep. was represented. That. And if you are only finding out about this now. 507, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Um, then I will apologize on behalf of the town. So I became aware on late Thursday afternoon evening that indeed the town had hired Attorney Pill. I was asked to speak with him Friday morning, which I did. I asked Attorney Pill to, after things had been um, officially uh, in place with the town, to notify you of his appearance on behalf of the town and what was going to be his likely um, opinion on a number of matters that were raised. That did not so, happen. And I also spoke to the town manager, indicated to her that is what I had asked. Now, that was the end of where I was uh, with respect to the notification. So that's the best that I can do to <coughs> express to you uh, our efforts to try to do that. So, well, I appreciate uh, that. I, will I, tell I you see two counselors kind of shaking their head, but no. No, okay. no, no, okay. no nothing to do with you. Oh, okay. I, so, I appreciate yeah, that, but, but I will tell and, you that. And the reason I did that is because <clears throat> I believe in full transparency, and I didn't want anyone to be sandbagged, and I didn't want anyone to be able to walk in here and say exactly what you just said. So <clears throat> I. Well, Steve feels like I he's tried got a, to give 100 you, sandbags on his back I, right now. I tried to give you the professional courtesy, uh, and of, I, which was And I applaud you for that so, and appreciate but, that, but that's not what the town executed. So, it's also troubling to me, having so, done this for quite some but, time, that the planning board apparently did not initiate reaching out to Mr. Bill. Uh, as I understand it, uh, from your statement, that you found out about it, so you, you as the chairman, I found out that they had retained Mr. Pill on Thursday. So um, I'm sure that there uh, was concern all the way around in town about the fact that the town, uh, that this initiative had gone to land court, was being heard in land court. The town and was named as a litigant in this. So I'm sure that there was a lot of discussion going on uh, among whoever about what the next steps were going to be. Uh, I think that um, uh, it shouldn't be a complete surprise uh, that the town might seek another opinion. Uh, it's done all the time. Well, so plaintiffs, defendants, Look, look for second opinions all the time. So, uh, I don't know if all the time, but it does. But it's it's it not is, unusual. It is done. It is not it unusual. It is done. It is and, done. So. However, the only thing Mr. Pill said to me coming in is he was contacted by the town manager, not someone on behalf of the planning board. Oh. The planning board does have the capacity to retain counsel. I've been involved with the cases. I'm sure you have too. Where a planning board sues a zoning board. There's one going on now, uh, each getting their own counsel. <clears throat> the town manager to reach out is. Uh, uh, unusual and in my opinion um, overstepping the bounds of this independent board um, making its decision unless the board independently requested this and I don't know well, I'm, I'm, I'm new to this tonight <clears throat> and so appreciate your statement that, but unfortunately your desire for transparency and communication um, was uh, not achieved He's made an effort to be here tonight, thinking that this was the, uh, everything was in place, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I've had to circle up with him for as brief a time as possible to say I don't know what's yeah. going to be addressed tonight. Yeah. So, <coughs> given that, 
So Attorney Pill is here. So I will ask Attorney Pill uh, in a second. Uh, so uh, I know that all of the materials regarding this matter have been shared with him and that he has shared with the planning board his preliminary findings on all of this. So I would like you to specifically, if you could, uh, address your findings as it relates to the planning board's ability to first vote on uh, a site plan, um, given all the factors that have been discussed throughout the course of our hearings and all the materials that you have reviewed. Okay. Um, I can I can do that, and I, I, I may owe Attorney Martin an apology because um, if I misunderstood and I didn't realize, I should contact him directly. So it sounds like he didn't get the memorandum I wrote. It doesn't sound like it. I didn't get anything. And okay. So it's not may owe. You do owe. <clears throat> Uh, so I, I do owe you and your client an apology then because um, that was a misunderstanding on my part. I was, I was engaged by the town manager and I sent my memo to the town manager with a copy to the, um, the planning board. So I am sorry, you know, I, uh, nobody likes to be you know, taken by surprise and that was not certainly intentional. And since it appears I'm the one who messed up, I, I, all I can do is apologize. For that happening. Um, with respect to your your concerns, um, the 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 entity sued was the town of Long Meadow. Okay. East Long Meadow. Okay. East, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. It's it's been it's been a hectic day, and my wife had me go grocery shopping, and <laughs> I just made it here, okay. um, and got lost in the building. I found the building okay, but I got lost a couple times in the building. So my apologies, East Long Meadow, um, and with a name like Pell, I I try to be sensitive to names of, of <laughs> everything and every everybody. Okay, but what I what I I said in the memorandum is that. The Lane Court litigation was brought under two statutes. Um, one is basically what lawyers generally term an advisory opinion statute, Mass General Laws, Chapter 240, Section 14, Capital A. And what the case law says is that, yes, you can, before you apply for any permits, go to the Lane Court and ask the Lane Court to rule on how zoning and that includes how the state zoning um, exemption statute called the Dover Amendment, Chapter 40A, 40, Capital A, Section 3, and the local zoning bylaw apply to a particular piece of land. Um, but the case law also says you can't use that to do an end run. And as, as Attorney Martin noted exactly correctly, I believe, the planning board is an independent land use regulatory body that has every right to make its own decision. And the other statute, and I think it was a typo that in the complaint they said Chapter 231, it should have been Chapter 231, capital A, which is the declaratory judgment statute, and that statute is very clear that for a court to rule, you need to exhaust administrative remedies, okay? and. Um, so the planning board, and I put it in the, in the memo, I think has every right to first make its own independent determination on whether um, this use is allowed in a residential zone. And in effect, that means making its own independent determination. Um, and if that, disagrees, if that agrees with the land court judge, then Basically, there's no issue. If it disagrees with the land court judge, then the applicant has a right to appeal. And while you have to go to the case law to see how to appeal site plan review, sometimes you can go directly to court under the Chapter 40A, Section 17. Sometimes, depending on the local bylaw, you have to go through the zoning board and then from the zoning board to court. And the reason for that is the State Zoning Act has never incorporated site plan review. Site plan review is strictly a creature of local zoning ordinances and bylaws, so every town is different and the correct appeal route is somewhat muddled. 
And um, I guess, in, in a nutshell, did I answer your question? Um, if not, I'd be happy to talk um, more about it. I did, I did address this in the memorandum yeah. I wrote. So I, I want you to address, so let's talk about the frontage issue. Okay. With respect to the, the uh, planning board's uh, ability to essentially, in your, uh, it, and please correct me if I interpret this incorrectly, but I believe it was your interpretation that this board could not waive the frontage requirements. Oh, yeah. Correct. It, exactly. And, and that the town did, that this petitioner did not have the frontage requirement in East Long Meadow, and to do, and if we, and if we voted to uh, approve the site plan, it would be invalid because there was no no frontage, and there would be no exhaustion of administrative remedies. Yes, the, the zoning bylaw is clear that that's a variant subject for the <coughs> zoning board of appeals. But what I think also I need to emphasize is we're not just talking about frontage, okay? The lack of frontage brings up um, two issues, okay? One of which was, at least in the, the emails, that all of which I think were shared with an, a, an attorney, Malone, for um, PLH, uh, is access, okay? Um, which has to be through Connecticut. And the other, which hasn't been raised, and, and for which I don't fault anyone, but what I tell people, this is basically what I do, and you do the same thing for 30 years, 35 years, eventually you make most of the mistakes and you learn in depth what you're doing. And that's called the split lot issue, okay? We have two parcels of land here. And there is Massachusetts case law that I discuss in my memorandum where a piece of land is in two zoning districts and where a piece of land is in two municipalities, okay? When that happens, because the court says access to a use is part of the use, and the key case that I cite, Harrison versus Braintree, basically was they wanted to put up a shopping center. Access was through another zoning district that was a residential district, and the court said because access to the use is part of the use, you, the applicant, must demonstrate that you can put a commercial use in that residential zone. As applied to two municipalities, basically there has to be compliance with the zoning ordinance or bylaw of two municipalities. Now what I note is, as far as I can find, there has never been a case where those two municipalities were in different states. Um, how a court would rule on that is anybody's guess, but lawyers are trained to reason by analogy and distinction. So reasoning by analogy, I think one suggestion is, and it's up to the applicant to demonstrate this, which they haven't done, um, uh, is to show that access for this solar project complies with zoning in Summers, Connecticut. The other issue, um, which flows from the lack of frontage, which was started to be dealt with, okay, and I put um, uh, some quotations from at least one email between attorney Maynard for the town and attorney um, Malone for PLH and that was well if how are we, how can the planning board in the town be absolutely sure because the fire department did opine okay we with mutual aid can get there through Connecticut but what attorney Maynard quite correctly raised is how can the town of East Long Meadow be absolutely certain that that access will be legally guaranteed throughout the right of the project? What attorney Malone suggested, and again, I don't fault any attorney, this is very specialized stuff, he said, well, we'll grant an easement. Well, the problem is, based on the deeds that he submitted to attorney Maynard for the town, um, PLH has ownership of both the land in Massachusetts and the land in Connecticut, and you cannot grant an easement over your own land. If you think of property as a bundle of rights, by definition, an easement has to be granted over the land of somebody else. So there is absolutely no way to create an easement over the land in Connecticut in favor of the land in Massachusetts. And the final detail that I want to note, um, and again, I don't fault anyone 
Um, there was, and I, I didn't mention it because I wasn't sure how far it had gone, but Attorney Maynard told me today that there were very brief draft land use restrictions that um, one of his law firm attorneys had prepared and that that had been sent to Attorney Martin. Okay, that simply, it was a first cut. And again, we're talking very, very specialized stuff. I did note in my memorandum that if you're talking land use restrictions, you have to deal with what one of the lawyers who wrote it called the Anti-Restriction Statute, Mass General Laws, Chapter 184, Sections 26 through 30. One of the problems there is if you're going to do a private restriction on private land, you can't just say, I declare restriction on my land. There has to be benefited land, and it has to be clear who is going to enforce it and how it's going to be enforced. And if you don't have benefited land, um, there are exceptions, and there's a couple of other statutes where possibly it could be held by the town. Does the town of Longmeadow... He's well, I'm sorry. A little sensitive about that one. <laughs> just, like okay. I, just like I'm sensitive about all the times I've been called Swill, Dill, Hill, <laughs> you know. Um, okay, East Longmeadow. Um, does, the, does the town of East Longmeadow want to be, or is it appropriate for the town to be the holder of that restriction, which then carries with it the obligation to enforce it? So that issue has barely scratched the surface. So it's not just the frontage, it's the split lot issue and the access issue that the frontage brings up. And I'm sorry to go into such detail, but part of, part of the problem is, and, and you know, this is how I make my living, um, land law is not simple, and let me be the first to say that if I, I, what I tell people is if you find somebody who claims to understand this area 100%, find another lawyer real fast. And that's why in a footnote, I specifically said, if anybody perceives errors, for gosh sakes, let me know. Thank you. So I, I just want to kind of go back to one or two specific things. So okay. one, you specifically say frontage is a use-neutral dimensional requirement. Yes. Well, 48 uh, section 9, subsection 3 is a use exemption. And the zoning bylaw definition of frontage requires that it must be in the town of East Long Meadow. And you say the planning board has no authority to waive a frontage requirement. Correct. So, therefore, if we were to approve this site plan, in essence, we would be waiving the frontage requirement. You'd be granting a variance. Which we are not authorized to Only do. the zoning board okay. can, can do that. Okay. The second thing, so you also raise in your uh, summary in, section, in uh, paragraph 6, Raising legal issues late in the site plan review process does not give rise to any estoppel because that doctrine does not apply to municipal zoning enforcement. So for the lay people in the audience, perhaps you can just flesh that out a little bit. The best way, again, this is not a doctrine that's well known, okay? So the best thing I can do is tell you how I learned about it. Estoppel means that, for example, in commercial transactions, if some of us are doing business with each other, and I make representations to you, okay, and you rely on that to your detriment, I am bound by those representations. What the courts have repeatedly made very clear, and in the memo, um, I quote at length the decision by Land Court Chief Justice Piper, who actually is the judge on the PLA East Long Meadow case, where he describes the legal authority as formidable. And I discovered just how formidable, and, and this illustrates the proposition in my hometown of Shutesbury, okay? Fella near Lake Wyola and Shutesbury is building his own house. He's put in the septic system, the well, the foundation, he's framing the house. The new health inspector comes out and says, just check it. And then he comes back and he says, you've got a problem. It turns out my predecessor made a mistake. Your lot is too small to meet the 100-foot distance requirement from your well to your septic system. And on new construction, we can't grant you a variance, so I'm going to have to revoke your septic permit. At which point, the building inspector said, well, then I've got to revoke the building permit. The gentleman, who understandably was very upset 
that his foundation, his framing work, his septic system, and his well were now a total loss, hired a very effective litigator who's gone now, may he rest in peace, Dick Howland, who in his day was a first-rate litigator, and Howland came after the town with guns blazing. The town attorney, also gone now, Michelle Leaf, and I had worked together years earlier in a legal aid office, and because Shutesbury has 1,800 people and no money, she came to me. And we researched this issue up one side and down the other and found basically the cases decided at that time that Judge Piper described in his opinion. And the letter that was written by Michelle with my help was, we're very sorry that your client is essentially bankrupted, but this happened because of a good faith mistake by the town and there is no municipal estoppel. Now fortunately for everyone involved, this at least has come to light before you know, anybody's gotten into construction. It's late in the permitting process, but there is no estoppel. And what I note is the public officials involved have an obligation under that first section in the zoning bylaw to do due diligence. And if something comes up late, while that is unfortunate, the law is clear that enforcing zoning you know, public land regulation for the public health, safety, and welfare has to take priority. Thank you. And it is my understanding that the matter before the land court is PLH LLC versus the town of East Long Meadow. That That's is, right. That is correct. Not the town of East Long Meadow Planning Board. That is correct. So that you don't it, have any standing to bring a case against the Planning Board at that time. At that time. So correct. certainly it makes a great deal of sense that the town sought to retain <clears throat> Council in this matter, rather than the planning board. My my because understanding the, is that's that's why I was engaged by the town manager precisely because it's the town yeah. that's the named defendant. Having known Mr. Pill for a long time, I'm going to take this opportunity to jump in because he's just going to take a breath and start again. So, <laughs> um, uh, and there are some advantages and disadvantages coming in late. Uh, some of the disadvantages of Mr. Pill are, for instance, I'll take the issues in reverse order: access. What you didn't hear Mr. Pill say is that the town, through its council, has agreed with the applicant on a deed restriction. And the deed restriction was going to be placed on both properties in Summers and East Long Meadow. In fact, I confirmed that tonight with Mr. Maynard, and he did send us a draft deed restriction. We discussed it. One section we agreed would be taken out. The other restriction would be stayed. It would be recorded. It requires that the property always be in common ownership and that the permit would be, the site design review would be subject and required for that. So in terms of access, that is ensured through the summer's property by the deed restriction. It also is incorrect to state that this applicant has not demonstrated to this town that it is able to operate the solar farm in summers. We have represented to you, the fire department has been consulted, there is a building permit, there is construction being done on that site now in summers. And so, for uh, access, the, the second prong of that analysis is just completely incorrect. Uh, the town is protected with the deed restrictions, and it has, this applicant has notified the town that of a building permit in existence for conducting the business in that zone down there. With regard to the frontage issue, uh, if any of you have it, I'd like to have you read into the record what Bulky Richardson and Jolinas's opinion was on the uh, frontage issue. I don't think I have it in front of me, but uh, go ahead. Okay, my understanding is they didn't see a problem with it, but I, I do need to take serious issue with the validity. Those, that restriction is hopelessly and fatally flawed because in no way does it comply with any of the sections in Chapter 184 governing land use restrictions. It's not worth the paper it's written on. And again, I don't fault anyone else. Different lawyers see different issues. As I noted in my memo, um, I think Bulkley Richardson did an absolutely first-rate job. I think they should have prevailed. They raised issues that, by God, I wish I'd thought of. And now, because I think I may be more specialized in this area of the law, I've raised additional issues that other lawyers didn't think of. Two lawyers are going to see different things, and my understanding is that's why the town manager brought me in. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy, if need be, to litigate that restriction. It's okay. worthless. 
So I'm going to bring it back to the board, um, just as a kind of a, a little break. Um, so do members of the board have any questions or do you have any comments? Anything you want further addressed by the petitioner or, or the town's attorney? Well, I was the one who brought up the front end issue initially. Yes, you did. And uh, it took some um, persuading to get me to, to drop that. And now uh, we're hearing from uh, Mr. Pill that, uh, in fact, we, we could not drop that. And uh, I think that brings me back to where I was before on, on the frontage issue. Okay. Uh, my question is, can the applicant go to ZBA while this hearing is still open and we have not voted, or do we have to actually do something before he can go to ZBA? I, I don't know of any reason they can't go to yeah. the ZBA. We could. Okay. What, while this hearing is still sure. open? Sure. Sure. Okay. Because sure. okay. that, that would be the, the proper route to address the frontage issue, as, as you point out. Well, I, and I just want to say we didn't do that because we were informed that the town council had opined that that, that issue had been satisfied. Understood. And never told until tonight that it wasn't, or that it was ever an issue after that. And, and again, we have not before this seen all the case law around this so you know it's it's hard to, it's hard to run from the fact that we're just getting this presented tonight yeah. and I, like i say i appreciate mr denver's yep. statement yep. this is not the way to run yep. a ship <clears throat> there's something called burden of proof and you know I, I i don't attorney martin wasn't involved in the litigation but if there is any, the, the applicant has the burden of proof, okay, to identify and deal with all the issues and to demonstrate compliance, okay? And so I would submit if there is fault here, it's certainly not with Attorney Martin, who's basically the face of this to you, but my concern is if you go to the Massachusetts Land Court, there's an obligation to stick within your competence. That's basically the only place I've litigated since the early 90s, okay? PLH chose to go there. And frankly, I would lay this at their door that they are the ones who should have spotted this issue much, much earlier than they did. And I'm not sure it was appropriate for them rather than developing, for example, their own memoranda, their own citation to authority, to simply go to the town council and say, will you give us a pass on this? Okay, okay. So, uh, Ty, uh, being the next senior member of the board, do you have any specific, uh, and I meant in, in years of service. Not oh, not in age? Yeah. Okay, thank God. <laughs> of course, I'm probably almost the oldest guy here. <laughs> um, you said if I understood you properly, that a landowner can't, grab, can't grant himself his own easement. Correct. Okay. And Attorney Martin just said that he has a easement deed restriction that he would file on both parcels, which are both owned by the same property owner. Um, is there a conflict there? Not, a, not an easement, a deed restriction. A yeah. deed restriction, but the deed restriction is... That, that your council... Your, yeah, but your deed restriction happens to be an easement. I mean, there's lots of deed restrictions. No, no, it's not, a, it's not an easement at all. It is a deed restriction that the property will always be, for the, for in order for the site design condition, that it always has to be held in the, by the same entity that owns the Summers property. And that restriction would be recorded in Summers and recorded in East Long Meadow. Now, Mr. Pill brought up reliance. We have relied in dealing with this town through its council. They presented the deed restriction to us they presented the frontage issue was resolved. So it's not, it would be, I think it's unfair to say the applicant has the burden of proof when a representative of this board in town says, this is all set. This is all set. It has been negotiated, it's been litigated, it's been reported to the land court. We have not uh, sat back and said, oh, give us a pass, or we don't need to do anything. We're will we have been willing to do everything that this town would want in order to have what it needed. Had we known that this was an issue and needed to be addressed more, we would have done that before tonight. Do you have a specific question? So they can grant themselves a deed restriction, but 
It still doesn't resolve the frontage issue, does it? I, All it does is I just say it's the same okay. owner in both seats. Again, forgive me for being technical, but it is a technical bit. An easement is an affirmative right to use right. someone else's land. Right. A restriction is a limitation on what one can do with one's own land. Yeah, I understand so, that. So conceptually, the restriction that was described, it's a sound concept, but the trouble is the document that's been put out so far it just doesn't comply with the statutes on restriction. It's completely unenforceable and therefore worthless. Well, in fairness of your own counsel, which I find myself being in an awkward position of defending, <laughs> he mentioned tonight that that was a first draft, that it was subject to further work, mm -hmm. and that the board had been informed that that would, as a condition requiring the restriction, would be worked out later. So despite Mr. Uh, Pill's uh, rating of uh, this uh, first draft by your counsel, uh, the, it's irrelevant. Point, point. point taken. Thank point you. Taken. Jonathan, do you have any? So, you don't need to go into explicit detail, but why is the deed Watch restriction out. not strong enough? Okay. Because I know, so it's, so it's already happened. The key case is Breer versus Fagan, B-R-E-A-R versus Fagan, F-A-G-A-N. What that says is under Chapter 184, Sections 26 through 30, with private land use restrictions, you must, number one, identify the benefited land. And what that also means is there has to be an owner of that benefited land. You cannot simply say, I restrict my land. That's a restriction in gross, meaning it's not a pertinent to, doesn't benefit some other parcel of land. For example, if you and I are neighbors and you pay me money so I won't build on part of my land, I record a restriction. The restriction complies with all the statutory requirements, including, for example, the time limit, which this one, this draft simply ignores. Um, and I state that it benefits your land, it's of actual and substantial benefit to your land, and that you have a right to enforce it. And then if it's violated, you are the one who can go to court to enforce it. So there, there must be benefited land, and there must be an owner of that benefited land who is the holder of the restriction unless, and here's an exception, and now we get into a really gray area that you probably don't want to hear about, a government agency, a municipality, or some other public entity holds the restriction. But then you're talking, if it's, say, a conservation nonprofit, uh, about what are called conservation or um, agricultural restrictions. Yeah, we're getting a little deep on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of a general, deep, so. um, because... No, Pete, I, I, I know you're not going to vote on this uh, on this issue, but do you have any questions that well, you'd like you to ask? The, you asked the question and they get answered. See, you've got the restriction. Let's say the restriction is strong enough to, to, to be enforceable. Does that clear the way for the frontage problem? Period. Yes or no, does it? You, you would have to argue. There's no yes or no. And yeah. No. Well, okay, the, with I him, don't, the answer him. is no. It deals with access, right. but it does not address the frontage problem. So if we can't, if collectively the board cannot vote to overstep over that rule, that law that's enforceable, can you vote to in a positive so, manner? So I see, I see this board, because we did promise a vote one way or the other, so I see three potential options for this board. Okay. One, vote in favor of the site plan. Two, deny the site plan. Or three, vote to allow this uh, hearing or item to be continued so that PLH could go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So those are the three options that, that I see. If there's another option, please point it out. I, 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 I do don't you? have any suggestion on options, Mr. Okay. Chairman, but I do want to get into the record tonight at least or have it made available to the applicant. You've now got a second opinion. You are a member of the bar. Mm -hmm. You know that I can give an opinion, you can give an opinion, and um, and uh, so I, you know, we were never informed of the basis for the opinion of your current town council. And that should be in the record. It, we were just told, I have it in writing, that the frontage issue had been resolved. Um, so uh, I would ask that we, you know, if Mr. Pill uh, uh, is, no one is, you know, 
absolute and infallible. Uh, so, uh, you know, I would like to compare and contrast when I finally see his memo, yep. what, uh, you know, Mr. You're, Maynard, you're entitled to see it, absolutely. What, what Mr. Right. Maynard uh, had opined to you and the basis for it. Uh, it apparently was enough to persuade uh, senior and tenure uh, member of the board at one point. Now he's been re-persuaded a different way by another opinion. Um, so I think we're entitled to know that. Absolutely. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, we're in a, we've got a Hobbesian choice here, right? Uh, we can either take a no vote and litigate it, or we can, you know, spend, unfortunately, more time uh, and money addressing issues, which I would never raise the estoppel issue on this. I mean, if something came up at the last minute legitimately, that's the issue. You know, I, I, that, I, would, I would never do that, but I, you know, I'll never, I, I won't let go of the sandbag issue. <clears throat> so, um, I would suggest we only have two, okay, two voting options, okay, to either take a vote on this tonight and let the, let the board decide how they want it, whether they want to approve it or not, or for the applicant to request a continuation so that they can go to the ZBA. It's not up to us to vote for a continuation. Okay. Yeah. If the applicant requests uh, a continuation so that they can go to the ZBA and uh, get a ruling on the frontage issue, uh, I think that that would be the right way to go. Well, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, I would, you know, I, I think it's a fair question for the applicant to ask the board. You've heard Mr. Maynard's opinion before. You've heard Mr. Pill's opinion tonight. Is the board find one much more compelling than the other and that therefore would feel inclined to be uncomfortable voting because of the frontage issue? I don't really think that's pertinent. Uh, well, that's the only issue left, so, isn't it? I, I, I found Attorney Pell's memorandum to be very compelling. I, I feel that he's pointed out the limits of our, our power, and we have to respect that. I, I'm not, I've been doing this for a long time, but I'm not an expert on uh, 40A, okay, at all. I'll hold you to that. Okay. You do, <laughs> please. That's why, that's why we engage counsel, because uh, there's a lot, of a lot of case law that there goes is. into planning, okay, yeah. and uh, if Attorney Phil tells us that uh, we do not have the power to waive this, then I respect that, and I know who does have the power. And they're in this town. It, it slows things up, I agree, but we need to do it right because we may end up in court yeah, again. Because and, and, and conceivably, we could uh, vote to approve this, and, and, uh, and that could be appealed. Someone with standing could always appeal. So, you know, the town get, couldn't appeal it, but we the, might, might as well get it right. And someone, so. would, someone would stand it. I, I, we definitely don't yeah. want yeah. to right. uh, so. have to challenge that. I would. I, I agree with Mr. Kingston that we should be the one who would request the good news. I'd like a couple of minutes to sure. take. So why don't we do a uh, five-minute uh, recess? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> board members, okay with that? Yeah. That's okay. Fine. Thank you. We're back in session. Mr. Martin. Uh, after consulting with my client's representative here, we would like to have this matter continued in order to give the uh, applicant an opportunity to digest the memo, receive town council's memo, and make a determination whether or not it is necessary and proper to um, pursue uh, a variance request on the frontage issue or to come back to this board and ask it to vote. And you would uh, request that it be continued to our meeting of March 10th. That is correct. Okay. So do I have a motion to allow the continuance? I'll make a motion to continue yeah, to one. March 10th. Second. So, it's not necessary. so we have a motion that's been seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed yeah. say nay. Hearing none, yeah. it passes. One abstain. One abstain. One abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Attorney Pill, thank you very much. Mm. I, Jim said an apology wasn't enough, but I, it's all I can do, and, you know, I, I, thought, I thought he was going to get a copy, and apparently the town officials thought I, I was going to do it. And 
So our meeting will last just a couple more minutes if you'd like to stay for a couple more minutes. Sure. Okay. So there's been a request by uh, Town Councilor Page to address this board for a very few minutes. Two or less. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, oh, Ralph. I know going forward, um, the Town Council had voted for a moratorium on the solar. I don't know where we stand as far as creating a bylaw. Um, I was just contacted by Donna Hatch in Hamden. I don't know if you're aware that they've just passed a new solar bylaw and it was just approved last week by the AG's office. Okay. So I'm going to be forwarding that. I think it's good reading material going forwards to see what towns around us are doing. And I just wanted to make the board aware that their moratorium period ended a day, it would have ended a day after they voted. So okay. um, they cut the wire pretty close, but like I said, I just thought it was uh, very nice that literally it just happened uh, that the AG approved it. Good. I'll leave these papers. Thank I'll you. Give them to Connie. Thank you. And if you want, I can send it electronically. That too. would be wonderful. So, and Mr. Page, while you're here, you're also a member of the uh, Planning Matters Subcommittee. Yes. So, uh, instead of Marilyn, who has been so <laughs> gracious <laughs> at our meeting, so why don't you give us the update? Um, actually, we just uh, met this week again. Um, it looks like it's coming to a hopefully close pretty quick within another meeting, possibly two. Um, we discussed um, some affordable housing uh, language and all that may go into it, um, how to compile it. Um, I think we've hit on all the points that we wanted to. We're trying to compile it together now so that we can do a final review so that it can get back to the town council. Thank you. Any questions for Councilor Page? You're welcome. Page? Hearing none. Thank you. So um, we are, we're going to, we're, we're not going to get the director's report this evening. So, sorry, Connie. Um, we got it in writing. We got it in writing. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so do I have a, any other business? I just want to let you know, I'm going to be leaving for a while. The next meeting is two weeks from today. I won't be here. Okay. And then I'll uh, be uh, gone until the 4th of April. Okay. After that, just to let you know. Thank you for the notification. I would like to communicate if I can, and it's completely legal to do via the computer, if I'm allowed to do that. Yes. So we facilitate. So if you have questions, concerns, I'll, we'll forward everything to you. Okay. And then you can just send to Bethany and I, and we will make sure that. Um, we facilitate on your behalf. Okay, good. In your absence. Okay, yeah. because it's an extended period, yeah. and that was planned long before, right? Of course. But, but make sure your communications go through Connie, and not to the board. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But I can I can participate in the meetings yeah. that way, can I? Mm. We've adopted the Mullins rule. But yeah, what was it? I read it. I read it. it, it does it allow? Does it allow this? Or no, it has to be voice. Uh, it's only one meet. Well, it's one meeting that you can list. Uh, excuse me, that you can miss. Promising that you will watch the D right. the video and read the minutes. But we have not adopted remote participation. Oh, okay. Right. All right. All right. Because okay. okay. I understand. I, I read it and understand you can't do that. Any other business before the board? Yes, sir. Hearing none. I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So the motion made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 No opposed say nay. Thank you.